Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, we're going to talk about how do you manually format your DAX. And by formatting, I mean you have to arrange the formula in separate lines and also indent the formula at the right places. But why in the first place would you want to format your DAX? A formatted DAX code obviously looks a lot more edgy and slick. It also makes the code a lot more understandable and readable. But sometimes people also fall for this halo effect that if you can actually write DAX and format it along the way, you are the DAX pro. Whichever reason that might be, that resonates with you let's just learn how do you actually format the DAX manually all right the first rule is rule of one single row so whenever you're trying to write a DAX formula and the formula is just going to have a single input you're going to write that in a single row so take a look at this sum function that I'm trying to create for a measure total units and the sum function is just going to ask me one single input which column are you trying to sum so I'm just mentioning the name of the column and that's the only input that the sum function is going to ask me since it just asks me for a single input I write that in the single row and close the bracket over there simple enough all right moving on now obviously Obviously, you would not end up writing each and every DAX measure that is just one row. You would end up writing DAX measure that span across multiple rows. How do you actually format those? So I'm trying to create another measure called sales amount, and this is definitely going to be more than one row, which is where I'm going to use the SUMX function. Let's just take a look. So for the first thing that I end up doing is writing the SUMX function in a row of its own. So I start with SUMX and I give it a separate row. Now, since the SUMX function is asking me for two separate inputs, it's asking me for the name of the table and the expression that has to be calculated in every single single row I will provide these two inputs but in a separate row of their own so I will use the shortcut shift enter to move to the next row some people also use alt enter but alt enter actually moves you to the start of the row it doesn't really come indented so I obviously use shift enter so I move to the new row and then I write my name of the table and I write my expression which is multiply the units with the quantity now once I have written the two parts of the formula it's time to actually close the bracket now whenever you have more than one input inside of the formula you can see that we had two inputs I close the bracket in a separate row once again so I will move to the next row and there I will close the bracket and you can see the bracket automatically gets indented to the start of the row here and you can see there's a small line going up to the formula it actually tells you for which formula did you start the bracket and where is it getting closed so you can actually trace the brackets back to where it got started and where you're actually closing the bracket all right let's just try to build the formula further and add a few more rows so you can see that every single part of the formula gets further indented towards the right so some x function had two parts the sales table and the expression they are further indented towards the right let's just say this time I'm trying to find total sales but only for the product color equals to black now let's just start to write the calculate function and I'm just going to follow the same rules that I've actually followed until now so I start writing calculate in the calculate function I'm going to have two parts the first part of the calculate is going to be sum x and every single part of the formula should have a row of its own hence the sum x function comes into a separate row now the sum x function also has two parts and these parts should actually indent further towards the right hand side because they actually belong to the sum x function so I will actually select the fourth row fifth row and the sixth row and I will use the shortcut control square bracket square close bracket to further indent them towards the right you can also use control and open square bracket to indent them towards the left hand side but if you want to indent them towards the right hand side control close square bracket and they actually move towards the right hand side now I can write the second part of the calculate function which is where I will write my filter or my condition which is where I'll say hey the product color should be equals to black and then I finally close my bracket you can see that the bracket actually gets aligned with the calculate function and I get to see where the bracket has been closed all right let's just take a look at the way you would format your DAX in case you're trying to declare variables and also use the return statement so take a look at this DAX formula that I'm trying to create which is where I've declared a bunch of variables and you will notice two things the first thing is that whenever I'm declaring a variable and the variable is just spanning out in the single row I just write that in the single row like the way that I've discussed it but wherever the variable is spanning across multiple rows I have always indented that towards the first tab and it doesn't really start from the first place here it actually starts from the first tab a little towards the right what this allows me to do is it allows me to take a look at the var keyword along in the first space of the line and I can just take a look at all the variables that I have actually declared and you can see that I can clearly see that the var starts here the var starts here var starts here and this is where the loop of all the vars end this is where I actually have the return statement the second thing that you will actually notice is that every single variable that I have declared actually starts with a unique keyword called var it, it has a prefix var and underscore
underscore you can try to have any particular random prefix that you can have what this will allow you to do is let's just say that everywhere I have used the var and the underscore keyword now let's just say that I select all of these lines here and close them or comment them and then whenever I'm trying to use any particular variable what I will do is I will write the var keyword and underscore and I will have the collection of all the variables that I have declared now you're gonna get this only if you actually prefixed your variables with a particular type of a keyword all right these were a few set of rules that I personally follow when I'm trying to write DAX and format my DAX along the way now these rules aren't really sacrosanct and if you wish you can add a few rules of your own you can also edit a few rules that I've given to you but yeah that's the by and large way that I format my DAX you would have also noticed that I was using a bunch of shortcuts that I did not speak about while I was doing it and I'm gonna leave a link to an interesting video that I created on DAX keyboard shortcuts that you can watch to take a look at all the keyboard shortcuts that I end up using while writing my DAX and also a quick reminder about my DAX course in case you're starting out with DAX and you need help to learn it you need to understand the fundamentals first and then build conceptual understanding to start solving more practical more real-time problems with your own data I will highly recommend that you take a look at my course and this is going to help you a lot let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be glad to help thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one Bye.